Hey guys, my name is Boris and I'm a computer engineering student at the Technical University of Berlin. And on this channel, I want to talk about things that I've learned and might bring you value, general educational topics and lifestyle ones. Today, I want to go through how you write a computer engineering slash computer science paper. Now, this video is not like others where I tell you how to do the research itself, how to look for the topic and so on. But I will really go and break down the paper structure itself. So I'm assuming you already have a project or something you are working on, but even if you don't, this is nevertheless very useful. We'll go over the general structure of a paper, then we'll go into the sections themselves and talk about what has to be considered there, and in the end I will talk about a few tips and tricks perhaps or common practices that are very useful for the writing itself. In general, a paper always follows an established line. First comes the title, obviously, then the abstract, introduction and related work. After those standard sections comes the body of your paper. Here you will write about the new methodology or algorithm or hardware design. After the body you will follow with an experimental evaluation of your work and finish off with a conclusion and perhaps future work. After that there will only be an appendix, if you have one, and then lastly the references. Let's first briefly talk about the title itself, since it can often be overlooked. The title should be on the point, concise and reflect the contents of the paper. In the recent years, catchy titles like the one shown here on the screen are getting pretty popular. But very common is also the name of a proposal followed by a description, something like those here and so on. So just think of a title that catches a reader's eye when they are looking for a paper. Now, once a researcher or a reader in general have found your paper, they will first read the abstract. In the abstract, you should write a brief summary of the research article. This should help the reader ascertain the purpose of your research and most importantly, raise interest. If we look at Wikipedia, it says something like an academic abstract typically outlines four elements germane to the completed work. You can definitely use the following points as a checklist. First, you mention the research focus, meaning you outline the problem or problems there are in the world or rather the research issues in your domain that you address in the paper. Then you quickly name the research methods used. Those can be experimental research methods, case studies, questionnaires and much more. This will depend on the work that you are doing, but you will probably know what you are working on. We will look at the paper of Approxtuner and go over its abstract as an example to see what all this can mean. I also made a video where I talk about the paper itself and link will be in the info card. But after that come the results slash findings of the research. Just show off your numbers to impress the reader. Finally, the main conclusion and perhaps recommendations, meaning you basically tell the reader to incorporate or use your work in some way. Now, because everyone typically wants a word count, including me, a abstract is typically around 100 to 500 words. So let's now quickly look at an example of an abstract that checks off all the points. Here we see in one sentence the problem they want to tackle. And here in this part we have the conclusion where they talk about what the end product is and why it works. Then they talk about the methodology and what their approach is. Again, remember, you don't start explaining how your approach works, you just tease it. And in this last part they mention the results give numbers to impress the reader and tells him that the proposed work is better than the previous works in this domain. So, after talking about the abstract, let's talk about the introduction. The introduction, by definition, treats the same topics as the abstract, but in more depth. Now, keep in mind to avoid using the same sentences as in the abstract. Imagine your paper following a top-down approach, where you start on a high level in the abstract, then go into the introduction and explain those topics that you talk about a bit more, or name them, and then in the body you really go into the real methodology and explain how your algorithm or your work functions. But here you can again focus on four paragraphs, or use the following points as a checklist. What is the problem addressed? Why is it an important problem? 
Here you again talk about the problem, but not like in the abstract with one sentence, you can be really convincing here. You can name more than one reason, you can say something about previous and related research and that they work, but have a big flaw that you want to solve, and so on. Catch the reader's interest. Next, what do you propose? What are the main features? Often this paragraph starts with, in this paper we, or this work presents dot dot dot. Remember the approach you teased in the abstract? Here you can go a bit more in depth and talk about what the structure of your contribution is and what important components you have developed. What are the main contributions and highlights of results? Common is a bullet list. The main contributions of the work are this and this and this. Now, this is relatively self-explanatory. You name the several contributions, so the new developments or findings of yours. A prox tuner, for example, does exactly this. Finally, paper organization. Here you just write like two or three sentences. Of course, that depends on the volume of your paper. Something like, this paper is organized as follows. Section 2 discusses related work. Followed by that, section 3 targets this and this and this. Oh, and please avoid the remainder of this paper, because the paper has just started. Now to the related work section. This section generally has two functions. One is that it shows the reader that you know what the state of the art is and are not doing outdated research. The second one is it gives you the opportunity to indicate the advances of your work compared to the state of the art. For example, something like the work of X and Y is restricted to shared memory systems, however, while our system, and so on. Some authors include the related work into the introduction, but generally it is just section 2. And some authors also include it in the n-1 section, so the section before the conclusion. But this is not really recommended since it just allows you way too late to compare to the state of the art of previous work. So let's get to the main part of your paper, your body. And it's quite difficult to give a precise recipe here, but I can give you several points that you should be aware of when writing your body. Keep your audience in mind. Is it read by someone with background in computer engineering or computer science, but who hasn't performed the work? Focus on novel features. Don't break down libraries that you have used or the design of the processor you used, except it is very important to your work, of course. Convince the reader that what you did is correct and makes sense. If design of your algorithm or your architecture is complicated, you can first present high-level design, then more detailed design, and again just follow a top-down principle. Next, illustrate design using good figures. Pictures and flowcharts, if not too big, and just good visual representations are always very helpful. Another one would be pseudocode. Pseudocode is very helpful, but alone it is not really sufficient. Be sure to describe it appropriately. Once you are finished with the main body, you are done with the worst part. The next fairly challenging but most interesting part is the experimental evaluation. Here you really show off your work with the results that you have achieved. And this section again is typically split up in two parts. We first again have a methodology section where you explain the benchmarks that you use, the simulator, the tools, and so on. Now with benchmarks, you have to explain why you used the benchmarks. For example, you could use a standard benchmark suite for image classification. And if you didn't use all, explain why you didn't use certain ones. But only a few reviewers really get worried when you don't, so you don't have to go too crazy. You can also say you use the same benchmark as paper X in order to better compare to it. Finally, often a table with the different features can be presented. When using a simulator, describe what simulator models you have used. And if it is a standard one, you can really just refer to its paper. So just explain how you did your experiments. In an ideal world, everyone can reproduce your experiments. Then comes the experimental evaluation itself. And again, this is really dependent on your application, so I can't give a really precise recipe. 
but be aware of which experiments to perform and to present. There are zillions of parameters that you can select and choose, so take one at a time and take the most representative ones. Very important, results need to be explained and discussed. It is not sufficient to observe that we are two times better than this guy. The readers want to know why you are better. And also very important, anomalies. For example, sudden increases or decreases in performance. They need to be explained, not simply neglected. It is way better to write, we cannot fully explain this behavior, but we think it is due to dot dot dot, than to ignore it. This potentially opens more future research for yourself or for others. Finally, there is the conclusion. This again is typically four paragraphs. One would be the summary. For example, something like, we present XYZ, a system that improves ABC in the following ways. First, this, this, this. Then you have to name the experimental results. For example, the experimental results obtained using a cycle accurate simulator shows that XYZ is faster than ABC by a factor of 42. Furthermore, this and this and this happens. Or you can look at this example here from a prox tuner. Again, just show off your numbers. The actual conclusion. Really dare to draw a real conclusion. Don't write something like, our results potentially indicate that it might be important to blah blah blah, but rather our results indicate or in our results show that it is important to do this and this and this. And finally, you can talk about future work. Here you speak about what you want to do yourself in future or suggest ideas for others to improve your system. All of this is yet again very similar to the introduction, but still be aware to not use the exact same sentences. So this is almost the entire structure of a paper. And now I will briefly talk about a few tips and common practices that are used when writing the paper and are really helpful and important. And I'll also include the references here. First, don't try to write a perfect paper in your first draft. It's like when you ask an author how they wrote the book and how they started, they always will say something like, I had no idea how to write the book, I just wrote down what came to my mind in my first draft and then later on I modified it and made it better. And you now, for example, also have this checklist here and you can really compare it. To write such a paper, there are many, many templates for LaTeX and this is definitely the way I would recommend writing a paper using LaTeX and using a template. If you want to publish your paper at a conference or something like that, the conference will demand a certain format. You can look them up on the internet, but I personally like using Overleaf. There you can also, when creating a new project, select a template from ACM or IEEE and so on. On Overleaf you can even work with others simultaneously, like a shared Google Doc. Once you have this template, this template will most likely use BibTeX and you will have to look at the syntax and how to use that for the references. Once you know the syntax of it, the compiler will take care of everything else. So the correct way of writing down the references and so on, which is very important and can screw you up real bad, but BibTeX will take care of that. Lastly, you don't have to reinvent the wheel with your own body structure or even with the content of your introduction and so on. If you have one, two or three main papers that you work with, they will already have a good structure and an interesting abstract and introduction. Don't be afraid to take advantage of that. In fact, this is fairly common practice. Of course, you shouldn't copy and paste, but you can really follow their guideline. If you have read a few papers on one topic, you will see those parallels and see that they have probably done something similar. Okay, so this video was fairly long, but I really hope it was helpful and educational. I have to admit, writing a paper is not my favorite thing as well when doing research or working on a project, but this is literally the more or less only way to really get your work to the public and that is what you want. So, if you have enjoyed this video, please consider liking this video and subscribing. And as mentioned, I have talked about one paper that I referenced here, the Proxtuna paper in a video. And if you want to look at that video, you can click up here. And yeah, with that said, as always, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!